so I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's monastery. Now at that time the householder Anathapindika was sick, suffering, gravely ill. Then he addressed a man. Please, mister, go to the Buddha, and in my name, bow with your head to his feet. Say to him, Sir, the householder Anatapindika is sick, suffering, gravely ill. He bows with his head to your feet. Then go to Venerable Sariputta, and in my name, bow with your head to his feet. Say to him, Sir, the householder Anatapindika is sick, suffering, gravely ill. He bows with his head to your feet. And then say, Sir, please visit him at his home out of compassion. Yes, sir, that man replied. He did as Anatapindika asked. Sariputta consented in silence. Then Venerable Sariputta robed up in the morning and taking his bowl and robe, went with Venerable Ananda as his second monk to Anatapindika's home. He sat down on the seat spread out and said to Anatapindika, I hope you're feeling well, householder. I hope you're all right. And I hope the pain is fading, not growing. That its fading is evident, not its growing. I'm not keeping well, Master Sariputta. I'm not all right. The pain is terrible and growing. Not fading. It's growing, not its fading, is evident. The winds piercing my head are so severe, it feels like a strong man drilling into my head with a sharp point. The pain in my head is so severe, it feels like a strong man tightening a tough leather strap around my head. The winds piercing my belly are so severe, it feels like a deft butcher or their apprentice is slicing my belly open with a meat cleaver. The burning in my body is so severe, it feels like two strong men grabbing a weaker man by the arms to burn and scorch him on a pit of glowing coals. That's how severe the burning is in my body. I'm not keeping well, Master Sariputta. I'm not all right. The pain is terrible and growing, not fading. It's growing, not its fading, is evident. That's why, householder, you should train like this. I shall not grasp the eye, and there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the eye. That's how you should train. 
You should train like this. I shall not grasp the ear. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the ear. I shall not grasp the nose. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the nose. I shall not grasp the tongue. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the tongue. I shall not grasp the body, and there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the body. I shall not grasp the mind, and there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the mind. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp sight. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on sight. I shall not grasp sound, smell, taste, touch, thought. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on any of these. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp eye consciousness, and there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on eye consciousness. I shall not grasp ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, mind consciousness. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on any of these. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on any of these. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp feeling born of eye contact. Feeling born of e-contact. Feeling born of nose contact. Feeling born of tongue contact. Feeling born of body contact. Feeling born of mind contact. And there should be no consciousness of mind dependent on the feeling born of any of these contacts. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp the earth element, the water element, 
fire element, air element, space element, consciousness element. And there should be no consciousness of mine dependent on any of these elements. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp form, feeling, perception, mental formations, sense consciousness, and there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on any of these. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp the dimension of infinite space the dimension of infinite consciousness, the dimension of nothingness, the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on any of these. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp this world. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on this world. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp the other world. And there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on the other world. That's how you should train. You should train like this. I shall not grasp whatever is seen, heard, thought, known, sought, and explored by my mind. and there shall be no consciousness of mine dependent on that. That's how you should train. When he said this, Anata Pindika cried and burst out in tears. Venerable Ananda said to him, Are you failing, householder? Are you fading, householder? No, sir, but for a long time I have paid homage to the Buddha and the esteemed mendicants. Yet I have never before heard such a Dharma talk. Householder, it does not occur to us to teach such a Dharma talk to white-clothed lay people. Rather, we teach like this to those gone forth. Well then, Master Sariputta, 
let it occur to you to teach such a Dharma talk to white-clothed lay people as well. There are those with little dust in their eyes. They're in decline because they haven't heard the teaching. There will be those who understand the teaching. And when the Venerable Sariputta and Ananda had given the householder Anattapindika this advice, they got up from their seat and left. Not long after they had left, Anattapindika passed away and was reborn in the host of joyful gods. Then, late at night, the glorious god, Anattapindika, lighting up the entire Jeta's grove, went up to the Buddha, bowed, stood to one side, and addressed the Buddha in verse. This is indeed the Jeta's grove, frequented by the Sangha of Hermits where the king of Dharma stayed. It brings me joy. Deeds, knowledge, and principle. Ethical conduct. An excellent livelihood. By these are mortals purified. Not by clan or wealth. That's why an astute person, seeing what's good for themselves, would examine the teaching rationally and thus be purified in it. Sariputta has true wisdom, ethics, and also peace. Any mendicant who has crossed over can at best equal him. This is what the god Anattapindika said, and the teacher approved. Then the god Anattapindika, knowing that the teacher approved, bowed and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on his right, before vanishing right there. Then, when the night had passed, the Buddha told the mendicants all that had happened. When he had spoken, Venerable Ananda said to the Buddha, Sir, that god must surely have been Anattapindika, for the householder Anattapindika was devoted to Venerable Sariputta. Good, good, Ananda. You've reached the logical conclusion as far as logic goes. For that was indeed the god Anattapindika. This is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, Venerable Ananda was happy with what the Buddha said. <laughs>